We'd like to welcome everybody to our annual National Day of Service and remember to stay here in the borough of Carteret. Would everybody please rise if you can and we'll have the invocation by the Reverend Andrews. Good evening, everyone. September 11, 2001, a day that shall forever live in our hearts. We will never forget that day. We ask God's blessing upon us as we remember those who perished and the families who are still grieving even up into this present time. You bow your heads with me. Heavenly Father, tonight I pray for the survivors of the attack of September 11, 2001. I pray for the families who have lost loved ones. I pray for the rescue workers and the police who were on the scene. I pray for the doctors and the nurses who cared for the hurting. I pray for the reporters who have worked effortlessly, tirelessly, to bring us the pictures and the news of the day. I pray for our president and the other elected leaders who desperately need your wisdom to navigate their positions in times like these. I pray for the pastors in Washington, D.C. New York City, Pennsylvania, and all who are in the spiritual capacity of helping others get through this great tragedy. I also pray for the military and the intelligence agencies who sought out these evil doers and are still bringing them to justice. I pray for our nation that this event will bring us closer than ever before. Also pray for all of those people who may even be tempted to bring evil tragedy upon our country. I pray, Father, that you will change their minds. I pray that you would remove violence from our land, evil from our hearts, and that you would bind us together in love and unity. And lastly, Father, I pray for every peace-loving citizen of the United States of America and abroad that will work to bring forth good and not evil. I pray that you would give the do-gooders the grace to overcome evil with good. And I pray, Father, that you would continue to leave your blessing upon this nation, upon our leadership, and upon this world. Thank you for your grace and for your blessings upon this day and upon those who perished. They will forever be in our hearts, never out of our minds, and forever a part of the human family. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Now call on Council President Susan Maples for the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Good evening. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We're going to have the playing of the Star Spangled Banner. 
by the Catarant High School Band. On September 11, 2001, America witnessed a brand of ruthlessness and evil beyond the realms of comprehension. It was difficult for us to grasp the scope of the tragedies that day. It was one of the single most tragic days in our nation's history, and many of us thought it was the worst day of our lives. Nearly two decades have passed since that fateful day, and for most of the members the memories of what happened that day are still as vivid and painful now as they were 18 years ago. And while times cannot ever remove that pain, we can find some solace in remembering how our nation was united in the subsequent days and months following the attacks. That day we refused to allow evilness to triumph over good. The counts of hope and heroism that emerged from the rubble of ground zero the Pentagon in a rural Pennsylvania field. It inspired us all. To this day, those remarkable chronicles of value continue to serve as reminders of all that is good and true in the human spirit. In our grief, our nation and the citizens stood tall and defiantly proud in the face of our enemies as police, firefighters, airplane passengers, crew members gave their lives to save their fellow man. Their heroism never be forgotten by a grateful America, nor by the VFW members, who by their experience recognize heroism and the high cost that counts that comes with it. From that day, we made a determination that no such attack will again be visited on us or any other nation. We learned that we must combat terror and those who seek to deliver terror. Today we are fighting to ensure that the liberties we enjoy, the freedom to cherish, will be secured for future generations. Today as we honor the memory of the 2,977 lives lost on 9-11, we know that our nation is indeed more secure. The resolve born out of tragedy has made us stronger, has made us better as a nation. The terrorist attack 18 years ago did not weaken or dampen our spirits. Instead of being defeated, Americans and freedom-loving people from all over the world united. And together, in a time of disbelief, chaos and great loss, we boldly stood together as a nation and refused to succumb to fear or despair. It truly became one of our finest hours. This tragedy served to remind the world of everything America stands for, that America will always stand tall and strong against violence and evil, and that we will fight for the freedom to live our lives free from tyranny and fear. We stood tall to safeguard the American dream, the very way of life so many before have fought and died to protect, and what so many of our new generation of service members continue to selflessly put their lives on a line to defend today. There is no doubt the memory of our innocent lives taken as a result of the uh, September 11th attack will remain etched in our minds, the heroic acts that played by firefighters, police officers, emergency personnel, and the average American citizen alike. 
moments of value, courage, and selflessness reminded all of us and the rest of the world of the ever-present American values that have carried our nation so admirably from century to century. From the outside looking in, many will never understand our way of life. They will never comprehend nor will they accept the basic premises upon which our nation was built. Independence, justice, and sovereignty. And there's no question that America will still face threats to our way of life, whether it's overseas or right here on American soil. For generations to come, Americans will look back to the events of September 11th and remember that freedom is never free. And it is our responsibility to preserve liberty and maintain its ideals. By doing so, just as we are doing today, we continue to honor the memory of deeds from that fateful day. Before leaving here today, let's pause to honor the victims and their families and those who selflessly sacrificed, protected and defend our freedom by recommitting ourselves to our families, to our communities, and to our country. For generations, America has served as a beacon of hope and light to the world. We must continue to be that inspiration. That's the best way to honor the memory that those lost their lives during the events on September 11th. Thank you. It gives me a great honor at this time to call on the Honorable Mayor of the Borough of Carteret, Daniel J. Ryman. Thank you, Commander, and thank you for all that you do for Carteret and for our veterans and for continuing to serve as our Master of Ceremonies at our 9-11 Memorial Veterans Day and our Memorial Day celebration. Let me uh, acknowledge again Pastor Andrews, thank you for being here to lead us in the invocation, and Pastor Bridge will be leading us in the benediction shortly. Let me also thank our council members, my council colleagues for joining us here today, and Assemblywoman Yvonne Lopez, Freeholder the Director Rios. To my fellow citizens and residents and to those joining us from abroad, good evening and thank you. Thank you for joining us once again as we honor the departed and remember the attack on freedom that took place 18 years ago today. At that time, the World Trade Center lay in ruins. The Pentagon was burning. A commercial airliner had crashed in the field in Pennsylvania. And unknown thousands of innocent victims had in an instant lost their lives. At the time, Secretary of State Colin Powell said in the hours after the attacks on September 11, 2001, he said, quote, you can be sure that as terrible as a day as this is for us, we will get through it because we are a strong nation, a nation that believes in itself. You can be sure that the American spirit will prevail over this tragedy. He was right then, and those words echo with us today. Here we are one generation later, and the United States is still, and always will be, the beacon of democracy, a light for the rest of the world, and the greatest nation ever created under God and mankind. A child born on September 11, 2001, would now be reaching adulthood, an adult who didn't experience watching the events on 9-11 Live as they happen, still mourns as a nation remembers and carries the spirit of those we lost and mourns the heroes who died that day responding to their fellow Americans in need of service. Years later at a 9-11 memorial service, President Obama said, quote, even the smallest act of service, the simplest act of kindness is a way to honor those we lost, a way to reclaim that spirit of unity that followed 9-11. And we all remember how unified this nation was right after the events of 9-11. How we, how we all came together, regardless of race or faith, religion, ethnicity, or political party. That's why we as a people and as a nation persevere. The selfless service exhibited by our heroes on 9-11, which we must now teach this new generation of adults, and that will be carried on to the generation being born today and the years that follow. This selfless service begins with the protecting those that protected us on that day. Earlier this year, a native son of New Jersey, a comedian named John Stewart, a famous comedian and actor turned advocate, joined with first responders who selflessly ran into the Twin Towers on 9-11. He joined with those responders in taking members of Congress to task 
about extending the 9-11 Victim Compensation Fund benefits to help anyone who was injured, who were sickened, or who died in the attacks, or in the response process, or years later because of 9-11 syndrome. He said to Congress, behind me is a room filled with 9-11 first responders, EMTs, policemen, firefighters, for both public and private service. He said, in front of me, a nearly empty Congress. There's not a person here, there's not an empty chair on that stage that didn't tweet or congratulate or somehow utter the words, never forget those heroes of 9-11. Never forget their bravery, never forget what they did, what they gave to this country. Well, here they are. John Stewart was right. Never forgetting our heroes includes taking care of them in the years that follow for their service. Just a few years ago, our own Carteret community lost Michael Mastillo, who worked for the New York, New Jersey Port Authority and passed away because of the effects of 9-11 debris and the 9-11 syndrome during the on-site cleanup. Our country still has troops in Afghanistan and throughout the Middle East and Africa as a result of the events of 18 years ago. <coughs> Just today, this morning, there was a rocket blast and an attack on the U.S. Embassy in Kabul, Afghanistan. Thankfully, there were no American injuries, but it goes to show that our troops are still very much at war with terrorists around the world. As these countless troops return home, some having served two, three, four, even five, tours of duty. They still, de still deal with the after effects of the war. That's why I renew my call and our call for our nation's leaders to fully fund our veterans, hospitals, our VA system, and to increase help for those suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder. Of any military service member who is suffering, who needs help, please assist them in getting the help that they so much deserve, that they're entitled to, and that they fought for. On this solemn anniversary, we also remember the three members of our own community who reported to work on September 11, 2001 and never came home. Colleen, Jay Sorrell, and Joseph. They are forever in our thoughts and prayers. As we persevere 18 years after that tragic accident, that tragic day when the towers fell, that tragic terrorist attack, we remember those we lost we pray for those continuing to serve our country. We take care of our heroes and we unite as a community, joining thousands of other communities and millions of other Americans around our nation to pay respects to the departed. May God bless the borough of Carteret. May God bless our veterans and our active duty service members serving around the globe. May he bless our first responders and may he bless the United States of America. Thank you very much. I acknowledge them as a group, but for a brief wave, let me recognize our Council President, Susan Naples, Council Members Vinnie Bellino and Jorge Diaz, Councilman Dennis Damasio and A.J. Johal, and Councilman Randy Crum. I see in the, in the back, they now call him the Silver Fox, but the former mayor, Mayor James Filet, Jim for a wave, and also a veteran, by the way. Now it's my pleasure to introduce for a few brief remarks, brief, we tell Ronnie Rios. <laughs> Ronnie's a dear friend of Carteret, but um, sometimes he likes to he likes to tell you how he feels, and that sometimes can take a while. But we're happy to have him with us. We're happy to have him back in Carteret to represent our community and all the work that he does for our veterans. Our freeholder director for Middlesex County, Ronald G. Rios. Thank you, Mayor. Good day, everyone. And thank you for joining us today. This simply does not get easier for me. And I'm gonna be quite honest with you. 18 years, and it's still difficult. Today we remember the events of September 11, 2001. The terrorist attacks at the World Trade Center, on United Flight 93, and at the Pentagon. These tragic events resulted in the deaths of nearly 3,000 people, Americans, human beings, that were doing just the right thing. 
Those losses include civilians, flight crews, police officers, and firemen. Although 18 years have passed, our memories of that day remain as vivid as ever. First and foremost, we remember the tremendous loss of lo losing our loved ones, friends, and fellow Americans. They will never, ever, ever be forgotten. However, we also remember our commitment to stand together as Americans in the face of this tragedy. Part of that commitment is not giving into fear or hate and resolving instead to protect one another. This commitment is especially strong here in little old Carteret, where at least three families lost their loved ones. Several members of those families are with us today in remembrance. And as in years past, let me say thank you for joining us here today. We will never truly understand the pain that you're still going through. However, I hope that you will understand as a community, we will continue to stand by you and honor the memory of those lost. At this time, I would like to also extend my heartfelt thoughts and prayers to these families and the families of all victims of September 11th, 2001. Let's take a moment to remember three of Carteret's own, Jay Sorrell, Joe, and Colleen. They will be missed by their families and our community. Sadly, many people that survived 9-11 later developed serious health problems. This is a story that is close to home for far too many of us, and one that I knew personally was Nick Polisano, former mayor of Spotswood. Nick served as his first responder on September 11, 2001 while working for Con Edison. And just a few years ago, I was at an event and he mentioned to me that he was one of the first responders and that he has the sickness because of 9-11. And he says, I'm not gonna live long. The doctors give me no hope. Sadly, he passed away this July due to the health complications from that day. He was only 41 years old. Nick was much more than a politician. He bravely held the title of first responder while others knew him also as a friend, husband and father of two young daughters. He gave his all to protect our nation when it needed him most, advocating for the protection of those suffering from illness or injury on 9-11 was very important to Nick. He tried for years to spread awareness of this issue and raise funds to support those in need. I hope that when you remember the events of 9-11, you will remember stories just like this one. We must continue to urge our federal representatives to ensure proper medical attention for all survivors. Please reach out and support our American heroes. And we can't forget our military. Thank God for our veterans, because where would this country be today without our veterans? Once again, I'd like to say thank you for joining us in this solemn ceremony. I hope this day continues to remind us that we must keep working towards peace and solidarity and that our loved ones will eternally live, eternally live in our hearts. May God bless you. May God bless the United States of America. Thank you. Director, thank you for those heartfelt words. Uh, it, it, our next speaker, who will be brief, is joining us uh, just from neighboring township, but he serves as the speaker of the General Assembly, so has the responsibility to represent not just his district and the county, but the 565 towns around the state of New Jersey, and, and he generally chooses to be with us here on these solemn occasions. So please welcome and give a warm welcome uh, to our assemblyman, to the Speaker of the Assembly, Craig Coughlin. Craig. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, everyone. And I can tell you, 
that there is no finer 9-11 uh, or Memorial Day service than right here in Carteret. It is a remarkably beautiful place and uh, it is always so well attended and it is very, very special. I thank everybody for coming out tonight. It's a beautiful summer, summer evening. I guess it's summer for a few more days. Uh, and you had a choice of what to do. There are many things you could have done. You chose to be here, uh, to remember those people from Carteret whom we lost, uh, and to celebrate their lives and their contributions to uh, our to the great community. All of us who were old enough can remember where we were on 9-11. It's etched in our memories. We know exactly where we were. We know exactly who we were with. We know exactly what our, rela our reaction was when we first learned. Now, most of us, like me, I suspect, didn't believe it at first. I was taking my kids to school, and we heard that a plane had hit uh, the World Trade Center. Now, it was a clearer day than today, if it's hard to imagine, but it, it was. It wasn't a cloud in the sky. It was a little cooler, perhaps, but uh, it, was, it was almost imaginable that somebody could hit the World Trade Center. And then the second plane hit, and we knew that it wasn't an accident. And at that moment, we were faced with a challenge. How do we deal with the fact that we lost 2,996 lives, including three right here from Carteret? How do we deal with the fact that 343 of them were New York City firefighters and 23 of them were New York City Police Department, 33, 37 of them, I'm sorry, were from the Port Authority in New York as well? What do we do as a nation when that happens? How do we respond to that? Well, what we did uh, was we brought out the best in ourselves. Strangers helped people to try to, to try to survive the event. As a nation, we came together, and we were no longer, for a short time, defined by what party we belonged to, what color skin we had, or what God we prayed for. We were Americans, first and foremost, and we were in it together. We were angry, and we had to decide what we were going to do next. Do we let loose the most powerful army on earth to destroy those who would seek to hurt us, or do we rebound from that? Do we cower in fear, or do we move forward as we did. We demonstrated, of course, that we were the best at what we could be. We moved our country forward and we are where we are today. But today, as the mayor noted, there's a whole generation of people who don't remember that day, who don't remember that time. Unless you're about a senior in high school, you weren't alive when 9-11 happened. And so I applaud everyone who brought their children today because they need to remember this. And all of us need to remember that we face a challenge today. Now that the the challenge that we face in terms of terrorism nowadays seems mostly to be from within, but it's rooted in the same hatred that brought about 9-11. And so we need to remember what we are as a nation. When we are best as a nation is when we are together as a nation. When we are one people who care about each other, who appreciate what we are. And so that's the challenge, to instill that in our children so that they understand that there is a great nation here and that together we can overcome any challenge. It is a privilege to be with you tonight. Thank you so much. I'm going to ask Assemblywoman uh, Lopez to come up and say a few words, share some remarks with us. Assemblywoman Yvonne Lopez represents uh, the 19th district, which includes Carter and Perth Amboy, Woodbridge, Sayreville, and South Amboy. And she's been with us on many occasions, and we're happy to have her say a few words. Yvonne. Thank you, Mayor. I'm honored to be here today um, as we come together as a community to celebrate those that we lost on 9-11. Uh, we're mourning. It's a very sad day for many of us. I was also personally impacted by my um, brother's wife who um, suffered a messy a nervous breakdown after um, that tragic incident. 18 years ago, in an act of unspeakable violence, our nation suffered a tremendous blow that still feels recent in our hearts and minds. Nearly 3,000 innocent lives were taken from us on September 11th, and today we come together in prayer and solitude to remember the lost and their families. We also remember the brave men and women who without hesitation responded to the call for help and rushed to New York City without the fear of the impact the cleanup efforts would have on them today. Today, these brave men and women are still recovering from the act of bravery, and we must support them, and especially stand with them, always and forever. 9-11 will always be a day where a nation mourned, but also mustered the strength to carry on, no matter how strong the grief and sense of loss. 
if we learn nothing else from this tragedy, we learn that life is short and there's no room for hate. May God bless the Borough Carterets and may God bless the United States of America. Thank you. Commander, I'm happy to turn the program back over. Commander, let's take your High School Band. Please rise if you can. Sighting of the lady in the harbor. I wonder what she thought as she stood there strong and tall. She couldn't turn away. She was forced to watch it all. Did she long to offer comfort as her country bled with her arms frozen forward? high above her head. She could not shield her eyes. She could not hide her face. She just stared across the water, keeping freedom's place. The smell of smoke and terror somehow reduced her size, so small within the harbor, but we still recognized. On a day so many died, I wonder what she thought, and I know she must have cried. Now call upon the Barcal family, the Savez family, Mangano family, and the Mastello family for the lighting of the memorial candles. Please come forward.
now call on Chief Mark Koreshko of the Clatter Fire Department for the ringing of the bells. Ladies and gentlemen, today we gather for the 18th anniversary of 9-11. For some time passes and memories fade, but not here in Carteret. We come together and your local emergency forces stand with the families who lost loved ones. We stand here today with the VFW, with armed services, with the American Legion, with town leaders, with civilians, all to honor those who were killed that day. During 9-11 at the Twin Towers, a total of 411 emergency workers who responded to the scene died as they attempted to rescue people and fight fires. The New York City Fire Department lost 341 firefighters, two FDNY paramedics. The New York City Police Department lost 23 officers. The Port Authority Police Department lost 37, and eight additional EMTs and paramedics from private EMS units were killed. Today, we're going to ring the fire bells, and in the fire service, there's a line of duty death. It's referred to as striking the alarm bell 555. It's a tradition in the fire service to, to signify one of our members has answered the last alarm. I'd like everyone to stand, please. After the ringing of the bells, After the ringing of the bells, uh, the VFW will fight to the firing squad and the American Legion will do taps. Strike the bell. Present arms. Please join us in the singing of God Bless America.
Matthew Cutter High School Band under the direction of Dr. Jack Bradley. And now call on Pastor Christine Bridge for the benediction. Tonight we have gathered to remember the tragic events of 18 years ago and to stand with families who lost loved ones that day. We remember and pray for those who are suffering from the illnesses related to their exposure to the toxic atmosphere that surrounded the Twin Towers after their collapse. Now, as we prepare to go back to our homes, let us remember, and in remembering, commit ourselves to working for peace in our homes, our communities, and our world. Let us pray. Oh God, you have been our help in ages past, and you are our hope for years to come. In the darkness of this world, we thank you for your light. In the storms of life, we thank you for sheltering us. Help us to be of good courage so that we may do what is right. Help us to love one another and teach us to walk humbly with you. Amen. Please crack your memorial candles. And join the Cutter High School Band in the playing of God Bless USA. Department, the Clatter Fire Department, the Clatter Office.
Office of Emergency Management, the Connor High School Band, VFW Post 2314, Quarter American Legion Post 263, and of course, there are scouts who are always here for us. Thank you, guys and gals. I'd like to thank everybody for joining us here this evening, especially our neighbors from surrounding towns. It's glad to see so many of you here to help us celebrate. And to our families, we thank you so much for allowing us to be part of your family once again. Thank you so much. God bless each and every one of you. God bless our troops. And may God always bless our great United States of America. Thank you.